So if we click register, okay, so you can see age must be a number and please enter a valid email address. Our name is actually, well, we've actually made a mistake in this code because now what's happening is uh, the fields aren't, are not necessarily required. Um, if you were to have other string data such as name, um, this check alone would not be enough. So what we can actually do is above here say if empty name or empty age or empty email then we can say errors equals all fields are required and if you didn't want all fields to be required you could just say all fields marked with an asterisk are required and include them fields just in this check and here we would say else we would come all the way down and we would enclose them inside this so essentially let me just run through the program and uh, let you know what's going on the first check we're performing after getting the variable names is we're checking if uh, the values are empty if the values are empty we're adding uh, an element to this errors array saying all fields are required otherwise we're going into a whole new set of checks and these whole new set of checks are taking place the first one is if the string length name is greater than 25 then the name's too long if the age is not numeric then age must be a number we're going to say to the user age must be a number and if the if the age is numeric then we can perform an additional check here to say is the age less than or equal to zero and that obviously means that the age is zero which you cannot have an age zero or it might be minus one or minus two because our integer set can include uh, negative numbers we're then coming down here and we're doing a completely different check and that's to do with the email address and we are just validating the email address and appending this error otherwise so let's go ahead and refresh the page let's click register you can see that our array now contains our only error message all fields are required and that's why we broke into this else block here because otherwise we don't want uh, any anything else to be validated until we actually enter data into the fields so I could say Alex I could put my age as zero and my email as blah if I click register oh, all fields are required um, so let's have a check here Right, okay, let's go down to our form, see if everything's okay there. Name, age, email. Ah, okay, so yeah, the pro okay, so the problem here is that, okay, so we've delved into a different part of this tutorial now. Uh, the problem is that I've entered zero as the age, and therefore we've automatically um, come into this error here because uh, age as zero is actually translating to nothing so I guess we could leave that as it is because if the user was to enter zero as their age uh, then we could regard that as nothing so let's go ahead and type in Alex and minus one for my age and then type in blah for my email we click register uh, we get the errors age must be positive and please enter a valid email address my name was absolutely fine my age wasn't and my email my email wasn't but now what happens if we type Alex, a sensible age, and then just blah, and we click register, you see that the only error that we get returned in our array is please enter a valid email address. So what we can do now is we can actually loop through these errors if they exist, and that would be done down here, remember? And we can loop through these errors and we can actually display them to the user. Obviously with print R we we're displaying it to the user, but this isn't ideal um, for a live server so let's go ahead and perform a check so I'm gonna say if and by the way this is outside of the block where we start to check our first error message so it's underneath everything else uh, except it's before where we check if our form has been actually submitted so if not empty errors this is just going to check whether the um, array errors is empty ie does it contain any elements now you've probably guessed by now if it's not empty that means that we do have some errors 
Otherwise, we can, for example, register user. Otherwise, we want to loop through errors and display them. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to use a for each construct, and that is going to say for each errors as error. So we're taking each one of the uh, errors, so each error as an element, and assigning it to the variable errors. And this is essentially a loop. So what we can do now is just echo out, um, let's say strong tag, strong tag, and a break at the end of there. And in here, we're going to echo out our error. So we can do a comma, and sorry, end that, a comma, and in here, error okay so we're saying uh, starting with strong we're creating the error inside we're ending with strong and then we're doing a break okay so um, otherwise register the user echo you've let's just escaped that character been registered okay so uh, th that's obviously just for uh, example purposes but you may have a uh, function or some functionality to actually register your user Let's go ahead and click register. You can see all fields are required. That's one error from our error array. Now I'm going to type Alex. My age is minus one and my email is blah. You can now see that we get two errors. Age must be positive and please enter a valid email address. So the difference between using this and an if else uh, statement or an if else if statement means that you're actually being able to display two errors at a time. Uh, so let's go ahead and say, uh, type in Alex and let's copy and paste that a few times age is minus one and the email is blah we should get three errors up name is too long age must be positive and please enter a valid email let's go ahead and say Alex minus one and Alex at phpacademy.org click register and we just get one error message so you can see how flexible this system is until the user enters the correct details, clicks register, and we get the confirmation message. So hopefully this uh, makes sense to you. It's a great way to include uh, form validation on anything you work on. Uh, it's a lot easier to keep track of what you're actually uh, checking for because you just have tiny little blocks here uh, with each error check. And then the part just down here takes care of actually displaying the error messages out. And it makes it a lot easier for readability where you don't have to scroll up and down to find where your if statement starts and where your error is displayed. So I highly recommend you use this method of validating uh, form fields um, and anything else really. If you have any other general errors to display, then this is also a great tool.